What do you need to keep in mind when thinking of moving to another country with your family? This video is not about how to pack or how to organize your paperwork, nor is it about where to move to. It's solely about your wonderful children and what they need in order to experience a smooth transition to the new place and be able to learn and develop well. Stick until the end to get an overview of the most important points, so there's no need for you to take notes. Let's get started. Moving to another country with children can be an exciting opportunity for them to learn a new language and experience different cultures. However, it can also be difficult. Whether they are toddlers or teenagers, there is no perfect timing for moving. Settling your family into a new culture and country will always come with its own hardships and challenges. If your children don't speak the language of the new place, for example, it can be particularly daunting to arrive in a new country where they don't understand what people are saying or aren't able to communicate with other children and teens. That is hard, really hard. But if you can help your children or make sure that they get the necessary support to learn the local language and culture, then you help them not only to adapt to their new home, but also to become adaptable to changes in general. That's a life lesson there. In my experience of working with many children that have come at different ages and from different countries to live in Zurich, the following points are the most important to consider as a parent out of a teacher's perspective. Language learning, social support and emotional well-being. Let's look at each one with more depth. Let's start with language learning. Before moving, ask yourself how your children will learn the new language. Be aware that if your child doesn't speak the new language, it won't be enough to just enroll them in the new school. Extra support in addition to that in learning the new language is absolutely necessary. Next to doing that, some options include enrolling them in a local school or hiring a private tutor even some months before moving. Being able to play with other children at the park or on the beach, even if they only share a few words, is less likely to induce anxiety than if they cannot communicate at all. Likewise, at school, little things like being able to understand basic things and say things like, may I play with you or hang out with you can help them join in with new groups more easily. And that can make all the difference. You can also encourage language learning by exposing your children to the target language through audiobooks, music and cultural events, for example. If you are fluent in that language, you could also start reading books to them in that language. These tips apply if you are thinking about moving once and that's it. But if you are rather planning to be a globe hopper, consider enrolling your child in an international school. I know they are expensive, but it is a good option. That will make it so much easier for you to stay flexible, to be able to move easily without taking any bigger risks regarding the school careers and well-being of your children. Most international schools have English as their main language. If your native tongues are not English, just make sure that you expose your children to their future schooling language, if possible, no later than the age of three or three. <laughs> so that they get enough time to become verbally fluent before starting first grade and learning to how to read and write. This would be a huge relief, believe me. And by you, I don't mean that you have to suddenly start speaking to your child in another different language. Just make sure that you create the opportunity for your children to be immersed in that language. This could be through daycares, nannies or other playgroups using supplements like music, books or high quality apps or hiring a teacher. Just remember that the most effective input source is a real human being, human interaction, not just things. If you'd like to learn more about this topic and become a pro in multilingual parenting, check out my online courses. 
This reminds me of a situation that I had two years ago. Let me tell you about it. I was teaching in second grade when we got a new student from Israel who had no knowledge in German and only a basic understanding of English. It was challenging because the child had been learning to read and write in Hebrew, which uses a different alphabet and is written from right to left. It would have been less of an issue if the child had started in first grade at our multilingual school, but in second grade, all of our children are already alphabetized. The parents were excited about this unique opportunity to come to Zurich with um, their family and learn new languages and experience um, a different culture. But this child was not well prepared, if you ask me, for this massive change to this new environment. Speaking primarily Hebrew and having to cope with learning to read and write in one additional language would have been more than enough, but expecting the child to learn French, German and English all at once was just too much, just too much. In my opinion, these parents chose the wrong school. They should have either put their child in an English international school or in a Swiss public school to learn German. In the end, the parents went back to Israel after one year. My students still made friends, had a good time and learned a lot. But if he had stayed, I wouldn't have been able to pass him on to third grade. Even though he was a very bright child with good learning and social skills, the hurdles and expectations were simply too high. The truth is that setting too high expectations on children can destroy them and it can destroy their self-esteem. So be careful with that. What can we learn from this story? It's important to find a school for your children that won't be too overwhelming. Challenging, yes, but not so much that your children have no chance to succeed because uh, that, that is the easiest way to destroy their self-esteem. Set realistic goals for your family and find a suitable environment that helps them thrive. Now, let's talk about social support. Nobody likes to feel isolated or feel left out. Moving to a new country can be challenging for children, especially if they don't speak the language fluently. You need to provide your children with social support by encouraging them to make friends and uh, participate in local activities. Look for a local community or expert group where children can interact with others who speak the community language and maybe even your language. This is also essential for you, not just for your children. The last point is emotional well-being. Moving to another, a new country can be stressful for your children, so it's important to be aware of their emotional well-being. Be prepared to provide emotional support and help your children cope with homesickness most of all, if you have a sensitive child, culture shock and other challenges that may f they may face in their new environment. Talk to your children often, ask them how they feel and plan solutions to any challenges they might be facing. They need to feel primarily secure and supported. Encourage your children to stay connected with friends and family back home through calls and social media. Today it is easier than ever to shorten the distance through technology. So use it to your advantage. So get your free overview of the most important points by clicking on the link in the description below. If you're already subscribed, just check your mailbox. Please hit the like button to support this channel. And if you're thinking about moving, you should also be aware of the importance of your native languages for your children's healthy overall development. So go ahead and learn all about it in this next video. Keep on doing a great job and see you soon.